Hello and welcome to the video. Matthew here and we're going to look at question 10 which is a 50 mark question on financial maths. So question 10 part A tells us that January 1st will be Connor's 21st birthday. On his 25th birthday he will be able to cash in an investment which will pay out 20,000 euro. So then A part 1 which is worth 10 marks wants us to find the present value of a future payment of 20,000 euro in four years time correct to the nearest euro assuming that the annual interest rate will be 2.5%. So we actually have a formula for this in our formula and tables book. So it's on page 30 and it's the second formula down on the page, the formula for present value. So P is the present value, what we're trying to work out. F is the final value, the value at the end. I is the interest rate as a decimal. And then T is the time normally in years. So let's work out our F, I and T now. So our F, the final value is going to be 20,000 euro. I is going to be 0 0.025. And then T is going to be four as it's four years time. So now popping these into the formula, we get 20,000 over 1 plus 0 0.025, so 1.025 to the power of 4. And we can evaluate this on the calculator. So that gives us 18,119.0129. Correct the nearest euro, that's 18,119 euro. So that's my answer for A part 1. Now we're going to look at A part 2, which is worth 10 marks as well. So this tells us that Connor starts to consider what he should do with the money when he receives it. He decides that he will try to purchase a house at age 30. He wants to invest his 20,000 euro in the stock market for five years, withdrawing it on his 30th birthday. He hopes that this investment will increase by 5% every year. So if the investment achieves the growth rate of 5% per annum, what will the investment be worth at the end of five years correct to the nearest euro? Once again, we have a formula for this. It's slightly different to the formula we just used, but they're actually derived from the same formula. So it's the very first formula on the page here, the formula for compound interest. So this time now we're trying to work out what F is, and we have P. And again, I and T is interest rate as a decimal, and then T is time in years. So here, our principal is going to be 20,000 euro, as that's the amount he's going to invest. I is now 0 0.05, and then T is going to be 5, as it's going to be invested for 5 years. So popping those into the formula, we get 20,000 by 1.05 to the power of 5. So now let's see what that's worth. So that's equal to 25,526.63. 125, so correct to the nearest euro, that's 25,526. So that's the amount the investment will be worth at the end of the five years. So that's our answer for A part two. Now we're going to have a look at part B, and part B tells us that Connor decides when he turns 25 years old, he's going to start saving 500 euro per month, lodging the savings on the first day of every month. He will continue his regular saving until his 30th birthday, however, he won't make a lodgement on the day of his 30th. His bank will offer an annual interest rate on regular savings of 2.5%. So then B part one, which is worth 10 marks, wants us to find, correct to four significant figures, the monthly interest rate as a percentage that is equivalent to an annual rate of 2.5%. So to do this, we're gonna use the formula that we used in A part two. So that's F is equal to P times by one plus I to the power of T. This time we're gonna say that we invested one euro at the start of the year. So P is gonna be equal to one. Now at a 2.5% annual rate, F should be equal to 1.025. And we know that t is going to be equal to 12, as there's obviously 12 months in a year. However, i is now a variable, so we're trying to work out what i is. So let's pop these into the formula now. So we get 1.025 is equal to 1 times by 1 plus i to the power of 12. So now to get rid of the exponent there, I'm going to take that over to the left-hand side. It's going to be 1.025 to the power of 1 over 12. That's going to be equal to 1 plus i. So 1.025 to the power of 1 over 12 is 1.00205 that's equal to one plus i. However, we don't want one plus i, we just want i. So we're gonna minus one from both sides, which will leave me with 0 0.00205 is equal to i as a percentage. That's gonna be equal to 0 0.2060%. And that's my answer for B part one. Now let's have a look at B part two, which is worth 10 marks. So we've defined to the nearest euro the value of his savings after five years. So let's take into account first his savings. Well, the first 500 euro he puts in, let's work out what the final value of that will be, or at least the formula for that. So it's going to be 500 times by 1 plus i, which will give us 1.002060 to the power of the amount of months that is going to be invested for. So if he's investing it for five years and it's compounded monthly, it's not going to be five now. As remember, the i is monthly, the interest rate is monthly. So it's going to be 12 by five to work out how many months in five years. And 12 by 5 is obviously 60. So the first 500 euro will be compounded for 60 months. Now the second 500 euro he puts in will only be compounded for 59 months, as it's not going to be compounded for the first month. And this pattern will increase all the way to 500 times by 1.002060 to the power of 1. 
So that's all the way down to the last month that he puts his 500 euro in, and that will only be compounded for that particular month. So now you may recognize this as a geometric series, and we actually have a formula for adding together all the terms in a geometric series, and it's on page 22 of your formula and tables book. And the formula we're looking for is this formula here, the second last one on the page. So S of N is equal to A times by 1 minus R to the power of N all over 1 minus R, where A is the first term and then R is the common ratio between each consecutive term. So to find R, we just divide one term by the term before that, and then N is just the number of terms in total. So in our case here, it'll be 60. So let's find R A, R and N, pop these into the formula, and then work out the value of our savings over the five years. So our first term here, which is going to be A, is equal to 500 times by 1.002060 to the power of 60. So R is going to be equal to 1 over 1 1.002060, as it's decreasing by that amount every time. And then N is going to be 60, as we have 60 terms in total. And now we just pop this into the formula and then evaluate to work out the value of our savings over the five years. So now let's pop that into our calculator and see what we get. So that gives us 31,963.59918. So correct to the nearest euro, that's going to be equal to 31,964 euro. So that was the value of his savings after five years. Now let's have a look at part C, which is also worth 10 marks. This tells us that Connor thinks that when he turns 30 years old, the average house price will be 500,000 euro. The bank will loan him the rest of the money that he needs with an APR of 2.5%. Connor is going to pay back the loan over 25 years, making regular monthly repayments starting one month after he takes out the loan. So now we're asked to calculate the amount of each regular payment. Now this is a mortgage repayment and the formula for this is going to be the amortization formula. And this is on page 31 of your formula and tables book. But before we use the amortization formula, we actually need to work out how much of a mortgage that he needs. As remember, he's using his returns from the stock market and his savings as a deposit. So we're going to take away both of those from the total amount that he needs. So we're going to take away his savings and the returns in the stock market from 500,000 euro and this will give us the total amount of money that he needs as a mortgage. So his stock market returns were 25,525 and his savings were worth 31,964. So adding those together we get 57,490. So now we're told that the average house price is going to be around 500,000 euro. So taking 57,490 away from that, and we get 442,510 euro. So that's how much of a mortgage that he needs. So now let's have a look at the amortization formula. That's on page 31 of the formula and tables book. And let's see if we can work out the amount of each regular payment. So it's this formula here, the very first formula on the page. So P times by I times by 1 plus I to the power of T all over 1 plus I to the power of T minus 1 where A is equal to the annual repayment amount. Now in our case, it's going to be monthly. And then P is the principal, so that's the amount of the mortgage that he got. Then I again is the monthly interest rate as a decimal. And then T is the amount of time that is going to be repaid over. So let's fill in now our P, I and T, and then let's solve for A. So our P, the principal, so that's the amount that he's going to get out on loan. That's going to be 442,510. The monthly interest rate is going to be 0 0.002060. We worked this out in B part one. T this time is going to be in months, normally it's in years. So we have 25 years, and there's 12 months in each of those 25 years. So we do 25 by 12, which is equal to 300. So now we just pop these into the formula and then work it out to get A. So now we filled in our P, I, and T. Let's put this into the calculator now to work out the value of A. So evaluating that, we get 1,978.939764, but correct to two decimal places, that's going to be 1,978.94. So Connor's monthly repayment amount will be 1,978.94 euro over 25 years. So that's our answer for part C of the question, the final part of the question, and the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I helped.